Hello, Texans, and welcome. Mark Vanderbeer, John Harris with you, joined by Texans outside linebacker Jonathan Grenard. And Jonathan, outside linebacker, or are you? Uh, <laughs> where are we going in 2021? Do you even know yet? Welcome, by the way. It's great to have you on. Man, it's great to be here. Thank you for having me. And I don't know. I mean, like I said, I'm just waiting. When they give me the call, I'm just going to continue to work out and, and stay in shape and, and be ready for whatever they want me to do. What's it all like right. this offseason, though, getting ready, Jonathan? Like all the workout routine you have to go through. Uh, it's COVID still. It's a little strange. How is it going for you this offseason? I think it's a little bit more relaxed and more. The nerves are out of it a little bit more. Um, I got the season on my belt. I kind of started training earlier with uh, Mike Eubanks, uh, our shrimp coach, earlier last year um, prior to the season. So I kind of got a feel for him, a feel for the whole staff. So now when, it, when I go to work out, I feel more comfortable and I kind of understand. I feel that he understands my body, knows where I want to be, and we're on the same page. So, I, And the other guys in there as well, so it makes it that much better. And how much further along, just the fact that, Jonathan, you know where the cafeteria is, you know where the weight room is, you know, right. where, you know where everything is. Right. And so instead of having to think about all that stuff, it's just kind of rote memory. How much has that helped you in the year that you've been here? Tremendously. Um, I think the main thing about that, because I'm, I'm a person that once I see it, the uh, once or two times or get kind of get a feel for it and I'm, I'm ready to go. So i um, going to the facility now where I can just go get my shape, you know, go get in the cold tub and get in a routine. And, and, and now you're really a truly a professional. That rookie, you're still a professional, but at the end of the day, you're still kind of just, you're a chicken with his head cut off in a sense. You're trying to just make sure that you're doing everything a hundred miles an hour while also trying to keep your poise and make sure that you're doing the right thing and not missing anything. So um, that's a huge part that I definitely uh, uh, took advantage of coming into the season now. I want to take you back to last year because it was about a year ago that the world stopped and changed and COVID came in and you were going through all your pre-draft stuff and a lot of it was normal up until that point. How did it change for you after that up until the time you got drafted? Yeah, um, it was like, I think I was done with, uh, with, with combine. Um, so, you know, that whole week, mm -hmm. right? I think it was like uh, February to March ish in that area of time. Yeah. And I know a lot of my, my other buddies, you know, teammates and stuff like that, they were going to the, their, their visits and stuff. And I know right then and there, I wasn't able to go to my visits because literally after I just talked to one of my boys who had a visit, they shut everything down. So mm -hmm. um, it kind of, it didn't really change things for me because I kind of didn't know what to expect in a sense. So I kind of just waiting on, you know, the phone calls, and emails, whatever the case of our communication would be, I was just waiting on that. And it kind of, when it, when it, it hit us hard and shut everything down, I kind of was kind of nervous that we wouldn't even have a season. So, um, when, when they kind of maneuvered their way around it, you know, Kevin Contact made it uh, most fitting for us to be more comfortable in those situations. Uh, it, was, it was cool. I just wanted to get to the football part. I was tired of doing the little tests that take three hours or, you know, I have to point to this guy, see what he's doing. I was like, okay, am I really here to play football? Am I here to, like, just be able to play on tablets all day? So, um, but that was cool. I mean, when, once we got through that part and then they kind of gave us a little date where we're going to be going in for camp and uh, working out and also with, with practices, that kind of – made everything a little bit more smoother. John, did you have any idea it was going to be the Texans? Because I know in a normal draft environment, there's a lot of talking among yeah. scouts out on the road and coaches and all that kind of stuff. And so things leak and people talk. Right. Did you have any idea that it was going to be the Texans? Um, well, they were definitely in my uh, got teams that I knew that were interested because I met with them at the Senior Bowl um, yeah. and basically went through the whole film, you know, their, their interviewing process. And I think I did really well there. But I also, you know, kind of didn't – I didn't like want to hold on too much to the, the interviews or what they might say because at the end of the day, this is keep it real, we all know that they're telling the next guy somewhat the same thing <laughs> they're telling you. Uh, yeah. So I don't want to get my hopes up too high, but I also knew that I was – they were interested because they took the time out to even interview me. So I was very thankful for that. Um, but I kind of had no idea. I mean, draft night coming up, um, I had a, a couple teams that, you know, me and my agent kind of felt pretty confident about. Um, but – when uh, the third round was about to end, I was like, okay, well, it looks like I'm about to wait till, you know, uh, ne the next day and then fourth round, fifth round, and so on. Um, and then as soon as I seen her name come down, I think that we had the 90th pick. We were on 87 or 88, you know, on the draft ticker. It kind of shows. Yeah. And, I, and as soon as I seen it and they came up and said, Houston, I said, wow, I forgot about Houston. As soon as I said I forgot about Houston, I get a phone call. So, yeah. and, 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 and the rest is history. Well, Jonathan, we know that last year wasn't the year we wanted, but what did you learn that you can take with you moving forward that will help you for the rest of your career, at least in the immediate future anyway? Yeah, that's, that's one of the main things that I think people don't necessarily see from the outside. I mean, of course, yeah, we, we didn't get our 
the result we wanted. We, no one wants to go four and twelve, of course not. Um, but the lessons that you learned throughout that that whole time, you know, being with vets and how they handle those situations, seeing how guys react, you know, during the losing season. You know, some people that are, were on this team never been a part of a losing team, you know, uh, mm -hmm. or never missed play. Who knows what the situation was? So it was a bit of adjustment for everyone, um, and obviously just for the coaching change as well. I mean, I, I dealt with a coaching change when I was at Louisville when Coach Petrino uh, got fired. So, and it was kind of mid-season as well. So, kind of, I was kind of used to it in a sense. Um, but seeing people who haven't gone through that, it kind of made us all closer and, and, and understand that we're all going through this together. So, as much as it kind of seemed, you know, on the outside that, you know, things weren't working here, things weren't working there, we all surprisingly were somewhat still working in it together. I mean, it's just things weren't – we had bad luck. We, we, things weren't going our way. You know, as you see in this one possession bad snap, you just name it. Everything happened that, that, that you can you can't even write it. So um, the worst things happened at the wrong wrong times, and I think it was good for us just to learn from it because um, now we know what it's like to be there, and we, now we got to work that much harder to get from it. So everybody in the NFL will have a, a rookie campaign, no matter how it goes, right. John. And yours will be different from everybody else's. Right. But did you at any point have? this kind of welcome to the NFL moment, like, oh, okay, all right, I guess I'm here now. Did you have that moment at any point? I, I, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I, had, I had a moment. Um, it was the – I mean, it was kind of a couple. I mean, obviously you got Kent where you, you're dog tired and you're going against the ones. Yeah. And that was my first time going against, you know, uh, Laramie and, and, yeah. and Titus and seeing that these are the top-notch guys that are paying in these leagues to, to, to protect the moneymaker. And – um, they welcomed me a couple times in practice, and I, that's why I like going against them a lot in practice because I want to go against the best of the best. Um, but actual in-game experience, I would definitely have to say uh, I hit Nick Chubb one time, and, you know, even though he probably didn't see me, I still hit him pretty good uh, in the backfield. I felt it more than he did, and I know for a fact that he kind of – and anybody knows who watches or plays Nick Chubb, he doesn't talk any trash. He doesn't say anything. So – when you run a guy over like that, when you hit him like that, you're expecting him to kind of, you know, either look at you crazy or say something back. I mean, that man literally got right back up and walked right back to the huddle. And I was just like, so I got to do this over and over again. And this guy's still going to be coming back 100%. So um, that was definitely my welcome to the NFL moment. And I, I definitely will never forget that. Jonathan, we don't know what the defense is exactly going to look like, but if right. you have to play with your hand on the ground all the time and be more right. of a defensive end, how do you feel about doing that on a more full-time type basis? Yeah, I have no problem with it. Um, whether I'm standing up, hand in dirt, I mean, like I said, I really just want to be um, – just just want to play. Just let me um, – just tell me what I need to do. I can go out there, execute, and do that 100%, 100% not have us thinking too much. And from that point on, I think you all will see the results play because once we get in a, a comfortable system – that kind of fits everyone and, you know, just lets everybody play um, to their abilities and, and, and within the system as well. Um, I think that makes everyone play as fast as so for To answer your question, yeah, I definitely I, – I love the idea of it, to just have my hand in the dirt and go um, and just mm -hmm. play ball, you know, playing on the other side of the line of scrimmage is what I do best. So, um, hopefully we can get that done. John, a lot of people know that I was really excited about you joining the Texans. I mean, you and I had met at the Senior Bowl, and I was really yeah. impressed. And in fact, right before you were selected, Mark asked me who I thought we should pick. And right. I said, you, I called my shot. So I, I uh, you know, your success shines bright on me. I'm very happy about that. Sure. But one of the reasons that I, you know, sort of fell in love with your game is I saw this, this thing on SEC Network, and I think it was maybe John Stinchcomb or Matt Stinchcomb mm -hmm. came, and you guys talked pass rushing yeah, for yeah, about yeah. eight to ten minutes. Yeah. And as I listened to you, I realized, okay, this guy isn't just trying to run around blocks. Right. He's actually setting guys up. There's an art to pass rush. There's a science to pass rush. Where did that love for it really kind of evolve? And how does your cerebral uh, – how does the cerebral part of it kind of work for you as a pass rusher? Right. Um, my, not many people know I didn't start playing defensive end until, like, my junior senior year of high school. And I only came in playing third down. So I kind of just knew how to just run past people. And I knew one move was the side swipe. And, and that's kind of – where that took off there. My D-line coach, uh, Coach Halberts back in Harlem, Georgia, um, he pretty much taught me the entire game about D-line. I mean, I never knew anything about, you know, setting the edge, you know, reach blocks. I knew I never knew anything about it. I played running back and, and linebacker all my life. So that's kind of – I stayed uh, off the ball or in the backfields running the ball all my life. So um, tramp me, uh, transform me and going to uh, to University of Louisville, and now I'm playing outside linebacker, you know, and I'm standing up. Now I have to learn a whole new way to play out, uh, play defensive end. This is a different form. Now I'm standing up. Now I have to be able to drop in coverage and do this and that. So it was all just learning. But the thing I liked about it most is that, you know, these are guys who play – there's so many great guys who play to this position. 
Um, and, and, the, and those guys are technicians, the fundamentalists. And, and that's the part that I liked about it because a lot of guys at defensive end, period, aren't the most athletic guys. And that's like myself. I mean, I'm not saying I'm not athletic, but just keeping it real, we're not – I'm not a Miles Garrett walking out there that's going to give you a, a, a 50-inch vertical and stuff like that. You know, it, it takes science, and everybody has their own – um, their own way about pass rushing. They have their niches in the in, in the game that they know that they can attack somebody. They know what they're really good at. And that's what I had to learn this year was what am I really good at? What am I what can I excel at this? And then I could build from there. So once I, I broke it down and, and made it not so much physical and like you said, make it more of a craft and mental and, and really hone in on your craft, that's when I really started to see the results and feel that okay, now I'm excelling and, and, and I'll eventually get to where I want to be. I have a long way to go, but definitely I like where I'm where I'm starting. Jonathan, we know you haven't had too much interaction with uh, Coach Cully yet. It's so early in the offseason. But what are your early impressions of the new head coach? Yeah, uh, I seem, like I said, I met with him uh, last week um, during a workout. Um, he came and met with a couple guys and they're just showing his face. I believe he just got his workout done not too long before that. So um, he stays in shape. You know, he looks like an upbeat guy. Um, definitely well-respected around the league. And I know a lot of people, even my agents and, um, you know, teammates in the past, you know, been with him. They say, you're going to love him. He's a great guy. He's the guy that's going to basically be there for the players, and, and, and he wants to win. And that's, I think that's what we all don't want to forget is that ultimately at the end of the day, we can have fun and, 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 and build a culture and stuff like that, but we also want to win. So um, when, we, when it breaks down to that point and when the camps gets there and, and we see how things are rocking when, when pressure gets to it, I'll be ready to see it. I'm ready for it. John, you mentioned a little while ago you've been working with Mike Eubanks. Yes. And I know when you, you ask a player, we ask players this a lot of times, and you ask them what they're working on, they're like, well, everything. And, <laughs> and that's true. You are working on everything. But is there a particular focus this offseason heading into 2021? Now that you got all the rookie stuff behind you, right. you can just focus on being a football player, not a tester. Is there anything in particular that you want to work on to get ready for this next year? Yeah, and I, I made it uh, two things, really. One is my flexibility. Um, not just, you know, just your regular stretching your hamstring and stuff like that, but just a lot of, you know, ankle mobility, um, a lot of knee flexibility. A lot of people don't know about that. You know, like toes. People don't understand how, how much a big toe matters in the game. Um, just no matter how you load. All the things that, you know, are, are key um, key features in this game that you have to have um, are, are the small things and workouts that you have to do. Not just so much, you know, going in there and squatting a, a million pounds or benching a million pounds and all that. It's, it's a little small thing. So I would say stretching and um, single, leg, single leg explosion um, is helpful a lot in this game just because, you know, this the game is, is changing. You got running backs that are juking with their knees on the ground. You got Lamar, his knee is pretty much on the ground juking and stuff like that. So, you know, things like that you have to be ready for. And I think that uh, they, they do a really good job there to, to hone in on those details because they know that uh, in this game you have to be more flexible. The more flexible you are, the more accessible you are, and the longer you play in this game. See, I learn something new every day. The big toe is an important yeah, thing. And, Johnny, you never told me that, so I'm really upset about, you know, your I, lack of big toe knowledge or at least spreading that to me. I ran a 5-2-40. I mean, my big toe yeah. didn't matter. I big to toe wasn't going to behind you. <laughs> big toe wasn't going to make me any faster, Mark. I can promise you that. Oh, boy. Uh, Jonathan, how do you – what do you do to tune out the noise or whatever? How do you react to it? How do you stay away from it and keep focused on what you need to do, the noise outside the team, media, fans, whatever it might be? Right. I mean, I, people, if people know me, I'm a homebody. I like to sit, sit at the house. You know, if, if, I don't have, if I don't have anything to do, that's my vacation. You know, mm-hmm. people want to say, why don't you go out of here? Go out. Look, I don't have any obligations here right now, so this is my vacation. I can sit at the house, watch TV, you know, go in there, take a job, walk my dog and stuff like that, but I don't have to – be out much places in order for me to enjoy my time. So I'm a homebody and I'll sit here all day if I have to. <laughs> okay. We talk a lot of football with the guys. There's no doubt, but we always kind of dive in a little bit and there's always a famous response to the two questions I'm about to ask that we got um, from somebody. And, and we always joke about it when a, when you're getting ready for a game, who are you listening to? Mm-hmm. What are you listening to? Mm-hmm. And B or two, I can't remember how I started that. Give us an old school flavor that you like too. All right. So uh, before the game, it's kind of weird. My 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 uh, process is a little bit different. I try to um, as soon as I get there. Obviously, we're you know you're getting undressed from your your outdoor clothes and getting tra- uh, getting transformed into your your your, your warm up gear. And I guess I'll put a lot more upbeat music right there to kind of get me in the zone to walk out. You know, go in the tunnel, go and warm up for pregame. And then when I get out there, surprisingly, I listen to a lot of slow music. Because, you know, uh, my, the slower music kind of like, 
I don't want to get too hyped before the game because then the, the jitters get there and then you, you kind of too amped up, you start sweating and you need an IV and this and that. You don't want to be uh, worked out before the game even starts. So, yeah, I'll turn a little slow music on. Um, and then, it's, of course, when I when I put the pads on and go back out uh, before the main actual uh, finale of the game, uh, I turn on a lot, a lot more upbeat music than I really get in my zone. Um, but to the second part, uh, the slow music that I am listening to is is usually a combination. It's most times either gospel or I like some mint condition a little bit. So mint condition back then is, is my mom. She's a huge mint condition uh, fan. So um, breaking my heart was was one of the first songs that I ever heard from them. And literally, I play that dang there every time I before I step on the field, just so I can just relax, kind of get in the groovy feel in a sense too, because it, it's really just about challenging. Challenge, channeling your inner your inner rage to get going you know kind of just kind of taming it at the same time while also like okay i'm ready to go and and that just gets me my zone it's, it's one of those weird things that i i've been doing for a while i love music love to sing love to do all those things so it just this is one of those that i like to uh keep them in the back of my head and, and keeps me humble down all right one more for you what advice would you have for the pre-draft athlete this mm-hmm. year because we're still living through the pandemic and everything yeah. and you just uh, went through it a year ago and we said you had the combine, but obviously right. now things are different. And we're going to have some new Texans come draft time. So what advice do you have for the pre-draft college athlete? Honestly, don't, don't, don't get too high and don't get too low. Um, it, it, this, this opportunity is an is opportunity that, you know, not many are able to see. Um, but, the, but the main thing I want them to understand is this is just a ticket just to get your foot in the door. This is not anything after this point is not guaranteed. When you get here, it don't matter if you're first, second, third round or undrafted at all. Um, you're gonna have to work just like the guy next to you. You have to, you have to literally beat the next guy here with you. So it's a fun time. Enjoy it. It's, a, it's gonna be a lot of dreams coming true. It was definitely one for me to get drafted. Um, but definitely, it, it, and, and my girlfriend always says it too. It's kind of like, or my mom as well. Is when I got drafted, I was so excited. But that next day coming, I was just kind of like, okay, what's next? Because it's kind of like, I'm, I'm, I, that was cool for me. But this time, I'm always looking forward because that's how this game is. So you have to always be thinking ahead of the next person. You always got to just be um, just eternal thinkers because it's, this game is about evolving and, and making, sure you're, you're taking, making sure you're a step ahead of the next person. So um, definitely don't get too high, don't get too low. Um, and anything that y'all get, hit it 110% and hit the ground running because it's going to be nothing but work. <laughs> nothing but work. Well, Jonathan, thanks so much for spending some time with us today. We look forward to catching up soon. All right. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, John, for having me.